Okay, welcome once again to Philosophy Online Lecture. We are on medieval philosophy, uh, considering various philosophies of the medieval era by medieval philosophers. Okay, and it will interest us to note that uh, the period, the medieval period, was that after the fall of the Roman Empire, where the church uh, took control and also religion took control and uh, you know religion was seeking for a rational ground to justify their beliefs okay so the where because of this they uh, used uh, ideas of Aristotle Plato and uh, Plotinus to you know uh, justify the beliefs of the Christian faith. You know, uh, religious beliefs are uncritical, like, unlike philosophy. And uh, so, uh, to justify this religious belief, they had to use uh, philosophies of the uh, of philosophers just like Plato, Aristotle, and Plotinus, most especially. Okay, so. Uh, we also have Islamic philosophers, uh, uh, worthy of notes are uh, Afarabi and Avicina, of which we'll be discussing in this uh, audio visual tutorial. Okay, once again, my name is MEM, and uh, I'll be uh, giving uh, tutorials on Afarabi and Avicina in brief. Okay, so uh, uh, in Spain. Uh, at the period, uh, there were Islamic and Jewish co communities, and we have had philosophers that influenced the communities with the works of Aristotle, Plato, and uh, Plotinus. Uh, one of those, the foremost, was Af Arabi, who lived between 875 to 950 BC. Okay, Af Arabi uh, wrote commentaries on Aristotle's work, like, uh, you know, Aristotle had a lot of work. And uh, Afarabi read them all and good uh, commentaries on Aristotle's work. Although he is Islamic, he held philosophical knowledge above religious knowledge. And his philosophical ideas were a mixture of Aristotelian and Neoplatonism. Okay, so moving straight to his proof for the existence of God, he used uh, Aristotle's unmoved mover. That is, there is always uh one that is moved and this movement is caused by another mover and this mover is being moved by another mover okay so we can't have it going on like that we have to have a first mover this is this uh this was aristotle's uh theory okay so he used this firstly to prove the existence of god also he used that of contingency being and wh what do we mean by contingent being we mean being that come and go you know like humans we come and go okay so uh the being of contingent being uh is not permanent okay their essence doesn't supply their existence okay so uh, therefore, their existence is not necessary. Okay? Because if it's, if their existence is necessary, then they won't come and go. Because it would imply that they will be responsible for other being. But because they come and go, we call them contingent being. Because uh, the, their existence is not necessary. And they receive their existence from outside, like a being lead to another being, okay? But all beings cannot be contingent beings, according to Afarabi. There must be that being which essence implies its existence, unlike the contingent being. And this being ought to be or is the source of all contingent being. Okay? So that's being which is the source of other contingent being is necessary in that it is e that is the source of other being 
okay so if this necessary being we cannot say it is temporal because if it's come and go then it cannot br uh, bring about other being okay because it's it's also he, uh, he also will cease to exist but because he doesn't cease to exist we say he is the necessary being uh, and that is the source of all other contingent being okay if you don't get it listen again okay so uh this necessary being to afarabi is god okay now we said his idea was mixture of aristotle and then uh, that of neoplatonism okay so uh using your platonism he said that god is the one if you have read your platonism you can check uh, our videos on uh, post aristotelian philosophy we talk about new platonism which was inspired by Plotinus. Uh, okay so in your platonism we have the one the intellect and the soul okay and then we have matter which is outside those okay so Using Neoplatonism, Afarabi said God is that one that we call the one, okay? And from the one, the intellect emanated, okay? And from the intellect, the soul emanated, okay? So, material things are just matter and form, okay? So, to Afarabi, man has two intellects, the active intellect and the cosmic uh the passive intellect the active intellect is that universal intellect of the world soul okay and the passive intellect is that one that is eliminated by the active intellect you know if you have read uh, uh on some medieval philosopher we're talking about uh the human intellect being able to grasp eternal truth we, we talked about that in st augustine okay so uh afar b is saying that this is the passive intellect that is able to grasp internal and universal truth from the active intellect okay so that is on the two intellects active and passive okay and also just like st Anselm, he held that everything came from god and we definitely return back to god and since everything we return back to God. Man should get ready for this return. And how do we get ready for this return? Two things. We should know God and be like God. Okay, so that is on Af Harabi. The next philosopher, uh, Islamic philosopher we're considering is Avicenna, also pronounced as Ibicenna. Okay, uh, Ibicenna studied philosophy and other disciplines he studied a lot of disciplines okay so he studied philosophy and he had difficulties understanding aristotle metaphysics so because of this he had to read afarabi commentaries on aristotle that was how he could understand understand aristotle metaphysics because he have he had read it over 40 times, but he couldn't understand until he read Afarabi commentaries. Okay, now being to having seen a being in is predicated to the necessary being that is a predicate of the necessary being alone, that is the necessary being being by excellence, right? And we only use being for contingent being for the sake of explanation alone. Okay, so uh, when we say human being. And so we are only trying to explain, but being is all is the property of the necessary being alone. Okay, so on the argument for, for the existence of God, uh, Avicenna used that of the uncaused cause. Okay, that is the everything as a cause, and one cause leads to another cause. But he said that this chain of cause cannot continue at infinitum. That is cannot continue. Uh, till eternity there must be a first cause and this first cause must be uncaused for if it is caused then it is not the first cause okay so this first cause must be uncaused and for it to be uncaused means that it does not receive its essence from outside it does not receive its essence or its existence from outside but within itself okay 
so it must therefore exist for it is it that led to other causes so without it, its existence there can be no other causes okay so this uh, uncaused is the necessary being and the necessary being is god he referred to god as pure act and perfect without blemish pure act and perfect okay so he also said that the attribute of god are similar to his essence so if we say that uh uh god has the attribute of goodness it is not just an attribute but his essence so uh, we, uh god doesn't simply have goodness as an attribute uh, he is goodness itself that is it is in the essence of god the uh, goodness is in the essence of god okay hope you are getting it okay so if you're not getting it kindly calm down and listen again okay so uh since these attributes or the essence of god such as goodness uh goodness by nature diffuses itself that is it reflects okay so if i am good it reflects do you get it so god having in his nature goodness sh uh, and for goodness to reflect to diffuse itself it's uh, it's uh, it means that god immerses himself in his creatures so if creatures are good it is god immersing himself in his creatures if creatures are wise beautiful and so on any attributes any essence whatsoever it is god immersing himself in his creature okay so moving uh, quickly uh the universe he said the material world did not emanate from god directly directly but by the necessity of his divine nature that is immersing himself okay so he said that the first being to being to emanate from god are the ten intelligence the, the ten intelligence are the first to emanate from god now this ten intelligence are differentiated by virtue of their closeness to god the first is of the ten Number one is the most close to God, is the closest to God. Okay, the last is the most distanced to God. Okay, so it is from the last that is where the universe came about. It's it is the last intelligence that, that is the giver of forms, and we can also call it the active intellect. Okay. It is the active intellect that eliminates the passive intellect. You know, uh, I've already talked about this. Okay, so just like uh, Aristotle also, I've seen that differentiated between the active and the passive intellect. Okay, and also it is worthy to note that the emanation of the world from the tenth intelligence did not take place under time, and this is why the world is internal to Avicenna. Okay. Now, like we said, the universe did not emanate from God directly, but from the 10th intelligence. Okay, so since this universe did not emanate from God directly, we should know that there are intelligence between God, which is the one, and the multiplicity of things. That is, and this multiplicity of things, God will not have direct knowledge of them because God does not have dual knowledge. Now, I will explain this now. Between the HOD and the students, there is what? There are a HOCs, right? Now, the HOD cannot have direct knowledge of all the students, except through what? The HOCs. So, God cannot have direct knowledge of the multiplicity of things, except through the intelligence, okay? Uh, because God does not have what? Dual knowledge, okay? So duality and multiplicity are uh, through the intelligence. That is the intelligence between God and the universe. Now uh, that is on uh, Avicenna. Now, lastly, he held that the like Aristotle here that the principle of individuation is not form but matter. That is the primary principle of individuals is not form but matter. 
thank you so much for listening okay so i think we have done justice to the islamic philosophers we are to look into okay afabi and avi sina thank you so much for listening please do subscribe and turn on notification god bless you